Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Hope United Church of Christ in Moline, Illinois. I am Santina Poor and I am the pastor of this congregation and we are so glad you are here with us here in the sanctuary or joining us online from homes and campgrounds and wherever you might be, uh, whether it's today, right now, in real time, or maybe you're joining us later this week when you've uh, got some time, like I do sometimes during the week. I love going through um, and just watching as many church services as I can at other churches. Some people call it stocking. I call it <laughs> faith formation. So, <laughs> But I am uh, so glad you're with us. And today, a little flashback from pre-COVID times, you'll see uh, at the end of each pew, uh, the old pew pads are back. So we invite you to fill like that's right, Kathy, wave that around. There you go. Uh, please um, grab that pew pad from the center aisle of your seats, your pew there, and fill it in. Let us know you're here, please, if you are comfortable doing so. If you're joining us online, we also invite you to let us know you're here. Uh, say a little something something in the comments or if you'd like more information about our church we invite you to send a message um, however you might send a message whether it's through Facebook Messenger or just email us please and let us know how we can be in ministry with you or if you have any questions about the mission uh, and ministries of Hope United Church of Christ so uh, we welcome you just a couple announcements. Uh, number one is the Pride Parade. The uh, Quad Cities Pride Parade is this coming Saturday, the 18th. The 18th. And we will have our open and affirming UCC contingent marching in that. We also have a car available to ride in and wave from if the route is a little daunting for you uh, uh, with mobility or whatever. It's different this year. It's not at the hottest time of the day, which is quite nice. Uh, the parade will actually kick off at 4 o'clock, and it's on this side of the river this year. We'll be starting at the Tax Slayer Center and ending at Bass Street Landing. And we'll be marching with our UCC uh, Open and Affirming Congregation, um, sister congregations this, this uh, year. Edwards UCC, once again, and First Congregational Moline will also be uh, participating in our contingent. So we hope, we hope you can join us if you have any questions about that. We'll be gathering at the staging area, which I don't have yet, um, after 3.30. The parade doesn't kick off until 4, so um, we hope you'll join us. And if you don't want to march in it, if you want to just wave from the sides, it's a pretty short route, so don't blink because the parade will be over. But it's still fun to be together and celebrate pride together. So that's next Saturday. I'll, as soon as I get it. I don't have the staging area yet, the contingent space number, but it's at the Tax Slayer Center in the parking lot. We'll get that out. Uh, Real Theology, Friday night is our Real Theology, and we're going to be watching Encanto. So if you know the music, Linnea, please come and <laughs> sing along. Uh, you can do a sing-along, and uh, if, you, if you know the music, young and old. Uh, so we'll be having a discussion following that, and that starts at 6 p.m. If you want to bring your own dinner uh, to eat together ahead of time, that's about 5.30. Ruth Circle, you wild and crazy ladies, will be uh, doing the channel cat um, coming up. So see Dorothy Burdick about more information about that. And this Sunday, uh, for anybody that reserved a ticket for something rotten, which is, from what I understand, not rotten at all, but quite wonderful, starring Ben uh, Holmes, um, your tickets, Dorothy has those. They are at will call at the theater under either, I mean, excuse me, under Hope UCC and Dorothy Burdick's name. The bus shows at 2 o'clock, but the bus begins running uh, at 1, 1 .15. So I guess you shuttle into the parking lot there. Any other questions, make sure you see Dorothy about that. Thank you again, Dorothy, for organizing that. Cake. 
There are delicious refreshments today for Fellowship Hour, which we hope you stay for, to include food. I see Anna back there. She's got <laughs> ice cream sundaes. Those are three words that, you know, the Holy Trinity Sunday. That's a ice cream sundae. Uh, so also we have cake uh, in celebration of Paul and Leona Powell's 45th anniversary and the delicious refreshments that Carrie Dad and Donna Warner and Donna Warner brought. So thank you for that. We do, um, I have not printed it yet, I apologize, but we do have the opportunity for more fellowship snacks if anyone would like to sign up to bring those. Fellowship really is an extension of the worship time and um, hope you can gather and celebrate together and stay for a cup of coffee and some treats today. Any other announcements I'm forgetting? Well, we are glad you're here. And today is um, usually, and it typically is, the Sunday following Pentecost Sunday is the day we focus on the Trinity. And, uh, you know, it's one of those doctrines of the church that, you know, a little, oh, but we see alive within us and around us every day. And as a special, special aspect of church today, we have our members of our youth group who will be here sharing the experiences they had this past week on our service learning trip. A really wonderful few days together, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to share about what they experienced. And um, our, one of our texts this morning in celebration of Trinity Sunday is from Proverbs about wisdom. And uh, wisdom speaks, and wisdom calls us into life together and into celebration of all of God's gifts. And I, as we begin worship, I, I just want you to think about her for a minute. Um, Wisdom is this gift that God brought forth as the wind, as God had that wind blowing over the chaos early in creation. As that wind blew and the waters began to separate and earth began, land began to form and shape. And as that wind blew, wisdom was calling us into creation. Wisdom continues to call us. She calls us from the highest heavens and speaks to all of us. And it is a truth that she offers. It is a truth uh, that calls us, all people, all of God's creation, into lives that are filled with faith and hope and peace, and especially the greatest of these, love. Hold on to that wisdom. Let, let her just fill you today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and come. Let us worship. All who are able, please stand for the call to worship. God finds delight in humanity and in each of us. Let us rejoice before the majesty of our creator. God, grace, and glory, who made all things. How majestic is your name in all the earth. In Christ, we are called to endure and to hope. Let us give thanks for a face that brings peace. God of grace and glory, Savior of your people, how pressure to us is your gift of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is present to guide and direct us. Let us listen that we may hear and do what is true. God of grace and glory, ever present with us. How reassuring is the love with which you surround us. Yes. Uh -huh. 
worship together as we lift with one voice our prayer of invocation, inviting God into our midst. Amazing God, revealed to us in more ways than we can count, yet binding in unity all that was and is and yet shall be, we worship you, source of mountains and seas, giver of light and darkness, we marvel at the work of your hands, reconciler and redeemer. We are awed by the forgiving love that draws us to you and empowers us to care for one another. Spirit of truth, whose guidance is available to us every day, we rejoice in your transforming presence. Triune God, bless, we pray, this gathering of your disciples. Amen. As we are gathered as disciples of the living God, of the risen Christ, let us take a moment first in silence to open our hearts and make ourselves vulnerable to God's healing love through our confession. As we share this prayer of confession that we're about to say together, we remember that what we confess are not things necessarily we did with intention. Sometimes we go through life and there are things we commit to behaviors, we share thoughts, actions, what have you, that we offer with no ill intent, and yet sometimes the repercussions of those actions damage others and bring damage to our spirits. So as we lift this prayer of confession, remember that there is another way that repentance is offered. Please join me in this prayer of confession. God of wisdom, our choices have denied you. We drink from the shallow waters of instant gratification when you offer springs of living water from the depths of your love. We pursue our own fame and glory, which crumble into dust when we view the sacrifice and service that build true character. O oh God, we confess that we have not put first things first. We have not lived up to the crown of glory and honor you offer us. Recall us to awe and wonder and guide us in the ways of truth. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through that love and embrace, that, that wind that God has blown into and within us and around each of us, through that power, we are filled, our souls are renewed, and we are renewed with grace and wisdom. And it is from this grace and this wisdom that we find hope, and it is that through which we know God's love, God's healing, merciful, redeeming love. Be assured of God's forgiveness and healing mercy and love and grace in your lives. We are loved and we are forgiven and our baptisms are renewed. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. May you wish one another that peace. As we move into this time of prayers of the people and lifting together the Lord's Prayer, I um, can't help but reflect, and the kids are going to talk a little bit more about this, and of course I will too, on our time at the Holocaust Museum and um, some of the testimonies of the people there, uh, the witnesses, the, the people who survived, the survivors, speaking about how their songs of praise, their songs, that the community um, helped them get through the worst of those experiences, whether 
they were singing or talking about you know their their mother's recipes and who had the best chicken noodle soup or whatever it was um, or singing or saying prayers together in in secret that it was the community that helped them through it that made it possible for them to survive which we'll hear a little bit about a little more about later and it is a community that we lift this prayer together and that is powerful may the Lord be with you let us pray God of peace and God of healing, God who is wisdom, God who is creator, God who is redeemer, God who is our spirit, who guides us. We lift our prayers to you as your people, sojourners together moving forward in this adventure in a world that can often feel hostile to the love and the mercy and the grace you offer that we are to receive and share in a world that would deny that love. We pray, Lord, that your strength carries us always so that we may be witnesses to, through our lives, that we may be witnesses to your love and light in all the places, in our community, in our global community, at home, at school, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and globally. We pray, Lord, for the healing love. We pray, Lord, for the wisdom that as she calls us we answer and we move forward sharing that in this world we give you thanks God that Lee continues to strengthen at home with Jerry her beloved and we give thanks also that Ken and Marsha are both finding the care they need to strengthen and heal. We give thanks that Dorothy's surgery went so well, Lord, and we pray for her continued healing. And that Cheryl was not too severely injured in her fall, and we pray that she continues to heal. We lift to you, Lord, and we ask for your healing blessings on our sister Kathy Lamaster as she continues to recover, that she will be strong and that she receives the care and the, um, all, the, all the things she needs to feel better soon. And we pray for Jessica, that they have some answers for her and that she is feeling better soon as well. We pray, Lord, for all the victims and the survivors of gun violence. We pray for the individuals and the communities who are traumatized. We pray, Lord, for refugees who have found their way away from the violence of their homelands and we pray that the sanctuary they seek is realized. We pray for those refugees from Ukraine, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, from Myanmar, from Afghanistan, Yemen, Haiti, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Kenya, and so many, many other places globally. We pray for safe passage, Lord, and we pray that one day they will, that peace will reign in their countries of origin and they may be returned and that their families will survive. 
We pray for our LGBTQ siblings, especially our transgendered siblings who are facing so many attacks, and we pray for these folks and their families as they face discriminatory legislation on the global, national, and local levels. And Lord, we pray for these global, national, and local governmental agencies who find themselves at the center of all of these various issues, immigration, violence, all of these issues. I pray, Lord, that their hearts will be open just enough for them to care and listen to those in our communities near and far who are being damaged by ignorance and greed and closed hearts. We pray, Lord, that your wisdom, your spirit, continues to blow over us and through us, and strengthen us and guide us to be your hands, your feet, your heart and voice in this world. We pray now we lift to you, Lord, the names of those for whom we seek your blessings. We, as your people, God, have lifted these prayers to you, the prayers we speak out loud, the prayers we type in, the comments, the prayers we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. And we do this, God, with the assurance that you know our prayers before we even know them ourselves. And that was the assurance that your Son, our Savior, Jesus, gave us. And we lift to you as one voice, with one voice the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The reading from the Hebrew scripture is from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 22 through 31. <clears throat> Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was giving birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, 
rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. The reading from the New Testament is from um, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace in, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our heart through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. The next reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. All who are able, please stand to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. <clears throat> he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Here in this reading for today. Thank you, please be seated. I'd like to invite uh, the members of our youth group that were able to come today. Annika, who you met last week, Annika Zemek, her sister Karenna Zemek, and MJ, please come on forward. Abby could not be here this morning. Uh, she has to work. So um, each of the kids prepared a reflection on their experiences this past week. So they're going to share those for you. MJ is actually going to read Abby's. Uh, and then um, I just want to say before they begin. It was really a treat to spend these days with these kids. And um, I'm grateful for the support of this congregation, for the journey they took, and I'm grateful for their families who, um, these are busy kids. Their schedules are nuts. And uh, I know their families all worked really hard to make sure that they had this time allotted for them to be able to participate in this. And we thank you so much for that. And we thank you for sharing them with us. So without further ado, uh, here's Annika. I think Annika's going to go first. And Corinna, can you wave your hands so everyone sees Corinna? All right. And again, just like uh, last week, uh, if you've been to any of our youth events or the bake sales or whatever, uh, you've met Annika and Corinna. And um, they get a double dose of church on Sundays. They go uh, with their family to their church in Iowa City, and then they hang out with us, too. So it's really a treat. So thank you. Annika's going to begin. Our trip was a very meaningful trip, and I know that what I've learned will stay with me. Through both the Holocaust Museum and Feed My Starving Children, I was reminded of how important it is to love all people. Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, and I feel that message really shined through and helps to make the world a better place. This trip also reminded me of the power of looking out for one another. The people in the Holocaust, especially in the camps, looked out for one another, and we looked out for all the starving children who were benefited from Feed My Starving Children. In a way, this trip reminded me that God is always looking out for us, which, has a, which is a concept that I've struggled with throughout my faith journey. And through this trip, I've realized that all the good people in this world who spend their lives doing things for others are one of God's many ways of looking out for us. At the Holocaust Museum, we learned about many stories of many different people. Some were more heart-wrenching than others, but they all hit pretty hard. Even though there were many different stories, there was a common thing that are both seen in the Holocaust and in faith. We can and should learn from our mistakes and the mistakes of others. It is crazy to think that if just one thing changed in their stories, they could have either lived or died. During our time at Feed My Starving Children, I saw people coming together to help. In just this act, and through our enthusiasm and resilience, and even our love, we changed the lives of our world's future. We made a child have the ability to learn, we gave them an opportunity to excel, and we made them stronger. 
If there is anything to be learned from our service learning trip, it is that change isn't found through bills, laws, or money. It is found through the hands and hearts of, not, of the people of not just God, but of the world. Um, so I'm going to read Abby's reflection first. Um, our trip was very memorable. Seeing and hearing the stories about individual Holocaust survivors brought more vivid feelings that inspired me to stand up for the oppressed. The hope brought to the people in the camp through their faith was inspiring. Feed My Starving Children was also an eye-opening experience. Seeing the amount of change we can cause within an hour of time makes me want to find more ways to help people. So now it's mine. Uh, uh, on Wednesday at the Holocaust Museum, I feel like I had my eyes opened. Throughout my school career, I have learned about the ho atrocities committed during the Holocaust. The museum visit added something unique to my knowledge, a personal touch. In school, we learned dates and numbers for whatever test we have to take that Friday. The museum was completely different from all of that. Alongside the statistics and stories were personal effects donated that show the cruelty that isn't learned off a slideshow. On top of all that, we were able to interact with a survivor, Fritzi Frischel, I'm sorry, uh, through a virtual Q&A where they recorded thousands of responses for future visitors. Their story was one of pain and suffering, but one where a glimpse of humanity, a crumb shared the size of a marble, can lead someone to survival. An antidote, which is an antidote not learned from the text, a textbook or a slideshow. The day at the Holocaust Museum helped shape my faith by showing how important action is. It is absolutely vital to serve those who are oppressed and underserved. Feed My Starving Children was an excellent opportunity to serve, and throughout it, I had kept remembering what Fritzi said about the crumbs given to her, that the hope and humanity showed by it kept her alive. I will always remember that. It really was uh, a moving experience, both the Holocaust Museum, our time at the Holocaust Museum, and then uh, staying in Aurora and working at Feed My Starving Children. And you know, when we planned out the trip, it didn't occur to me how they would go hand in hand like that, that of course, um, of course they do. But hearing the stories, uh, reading the the testimonies of the survivors, the witnesses to these atrocities at the Holocaust Museum. Fritzi uh, was one of the people who, um, she was uh, one of the people who helped the museum get off the ground. And uh, she, after surviving, she was one of the youngest survivors of Auschwitz. The story MJ mentioned about uh, the crumbs, so she was 13, in 1944 when she was brought to the camp. And the story is uh, she lied about her age so they wouldn't kill her. And she ended up working in a slave labor factory with, there were 600 women, 599 women and her. And they knew she was young and they decided that she would have the best chance of survival. So every day they got like this little piece of bread for their daily ration of food they were given. And every day they tore off a little bit, 599 women tore off a little bit from their little tiny bit of bread they received. And they'd line up and each give it to Fritzi so that she had an additional amount of bread. And she said it was just the size of a marble, but that they wanted her to survive, to tell their story, and she did. And she didn't for a long time, and then when she had grandchildren, she said she realized she had to do this, and she did, and it was amazing. Uh, there's, I, I hope as a congregation, we can go and take this trip together to the Holocaust Museum as well. It, it was moving uh, for me, uh, and to watch the kids respond to it, and uh, it was, so thank you for that. 
One of the things that they have there is this exhibit of the crystal knocked, broken glass and photographs and uh, testimonies on the wall. Uh, this is a, we did not take this photograph. I got this off the internet. I, I was just in the whole time. I didn't take a picture. Uh, that, and then they had a box car that they brought over, one of uh, the box cars that people were transported in. And to stand in that, all of us, we didn't stay in there very long, did we? None of us wanted to stay in that box car very long. And MJ kind of touched on this. He, MJ mentioned this, I should say, about the, the rice, the, the crumb of survival that was contributed to helping Fritzy survive. When we were at Feed My Starving Children the next day, working, you know, there was rice all over the place. And it's, we're going as a church, we'll be going to Feed My Starving Children because it's so great. The mission is wonderful. The way it's organized is great. So I was in charge of weighing the bags once all the stuff got put in it to make sure they were, they were supposed to be between 380 and 400 grams. And some of them were a little short and you had a little thing of rice to make sure. And I was amazed, it never occurred to me how little rice, how little amount of rice makes such a difference. You know, it would be below weight and you just put it, not even half a tablespoon of rice and suddenly you have enough to be able to send this package to somebody. So what a difference, just that the crumb that was given, that was shared with Fritzy or the rice that is saved and put into these bags. What a difference. And I hope we can each be part of that difference. I uh, continue to learn things from our youth. And I thank you, the youth, for sharing this time with me, teaching me, and sharing your insights with me along the way. Some goofy things and some fun things too. <laughs> so thank you for that. And thank you to our congregation for supporting this. Um, I just, in closing, remind us that God calls us to love one another. And there are so many ways we do this and we are called to do this. But sadly, there are many ways as we saw at the Holocaust Museum that people live and act and do the opposite. So one of the me messages at the Holocaust Museum was to take a stand, to always be the voice that isn't afraid to speak up, that isn't afraid to point out something uh, that needs to be fixed, to call out injustice when we see it. And I pray that that's something that you will carry with you. And I have no doubt our youth will, I think they are good servants of that message and carriers of that message. And I pray we all have that strength to stand up and take a stand and live and be in this world to demonstrate that love is always stronger than hate and that love has to win and will win. Amen.
Our God, who is mindful of us and our needs, send us into the world to attend to the needs of others. Where there is enmity or suffering or spiritual poverty, we may become channels through which the Holy Spirit acts. <clears throat> when we give our earnings, we extend our influence beyond our own reach. Let us give thankfully and generously. Let us pray. Giving God, we are grateful for wisdom, for beauty, for the ways in which we see your glory in all creation. Most of all, we thank you for caring for us and for entrusting to us the ministry of caring for the earth and for one another. May these offerings extend the face and honor you, creator, savior, and sustainer. Amen. Our worship in this place, in this moment, this brief moment in time, this has ended, but we take our worship out into the world with us. We take our love for God and the love with which God carries us into all the places where that love is most needed. God's love has been poured into our hearts. When we give it away, we have even more for ourselves. The Holy Spirit has blessed us with love. The Spirit dwells with us and enables our loving. The Spirit of truth promises to guide us. When we respond, our lives are deeply enriched. God has crowned us with glory and honor. We are given responsibility to care for God's creation. Wisdom continues as a partner in creation and re-creation. Let us praise the one who has dominion over all. How majestic is God's name in all the earth. We accept the grace and peace God offers. Amen. And now, my friends, in the name of our creator God, of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our guide and the offerer of wisdom, Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Amen.